but in my experience, <laughs> he's so much. For those of you who've been to the Peace All Stars concert, you know he's an amazing voice and fantastic singer. Uh, but for me, the most important thing about Ron is that he brings a, an amazing combination of, of profound commitment, deep analysis, and seemingly unexhaustible patience for those of us who have a hard time sometimes we're you know, as he walk, walks through with us to help us build a deeper understanding about racial justice, economic justice, environmental justice, and really has, is a, he's a fantastic teacher. I will miss his wisdom on the board. I will be great and grateful. I will continue to have his wisdom with our racial and economic justice task force and in so many other ways. And he will carry us through the rest of our evening. Thank you, Laura. circle with a fence and a gate in front of those houses. Well, the gate and the fence are so far from the houses that when people come to the gate, if they just knock, they won't be heard. So instead of knocking, they call out. They say, ah, go. Somebody inside says, ah, go means, are you ready? Are you listening? Are you home? Can I come in? means all those things together at the same time. Amen means yes, I'm ready, yes, I'm listening, yes, I'm home, come on in, sit down, and have something to eat. It's true, I'm not making that up. Whenever anybody comes to an Ashanti person's house, they always try to feed that person. And if they don't have food, you go to the next house and you eat that person. <laughs> it is a social value, a cultural value. And they don't just say ako, ame, they have lots of call and response things they do to help cement, to help build community. It's very important for them to maintain that sense of connectedness through community. Several years ago, I read a, an essay in a book. The book is called, um, excuse me, it's called The House That Race Built. Collection of essays, fabulous collection. I think it was published in 19, or in 2003, I believe. Um, if you get a chance to read it, I suggest it for everybody. It's incredible. Um, the House That Race Built. The very first essay in that book is an essay by the author Toni Morrison. The essay is called Home. And in that essay, Toni Morrison describes a situation in which there's a young woman who, in the middle of the night, on a hot, hot night, is having difficulty sleeping. And so she gets up out of bed, puts on her robe, and walks out. She figures taking a walk would help to calm her down. Maybe she can come back and be able to sleep. She walks through the still night air, not fearing in the least for her safety, not thinking that anything that she might encounter would harm her. Partway through the walk, she passes a group of young men standing on a corner, and she waves, and they wave at her, and she continues on the way with no thought that they might harm her. Partway through the walk, she comes to a house, and she hears a baby inside that house. The baby is crying, and she knows that she's good with children, so she walks over to the house and knocks on the door. And the residents of the house open the door and let her in, and she comes in and helps to soothe that baby. And when she finishes, she leaves, they thank her, and she continues walking in the night air, wearing nothing but her robe and her pajamas, until she gets back home, and she sleeps peacefully and quietly. When I first read that essay, I cried. The title of that essay is Home, and in that essay, Toni Morrison paints an image of what life might be like. What if we lived on a, in a place, on a world, 
where we could feel that level of safety all the time. Home. What if that was the kind of home that we could describe? We live in a society on a world that is so out of balance that it's almost impossible for us to imagine that kind of safety, that degree. I mean, impossible to imagine that kind of safety. In this country, one out of every four children lives in poverty. The extremes of wealth and poverty are so, so the, the numbers are just that. They're numbing to think about. That is the kind of social imbalance that we struggle with. And as I said a minute ago, with that kind of imbalance, it's hard to even imagine the kind of world that Toni Morrison talks about. Not too long ago, I also read an essay by um, Mohandas Gandhi. And in that essay, which he wrote during India's struggle for independence from Britain, in that essay, he talks about how if we want, if the Indian population wanted to achieve a just society, they needed to act on two fronts. Not merely lack of cooperation with the evil of colonialism, but also cooperation with the good. Gandhi recognized the need to build, to create new paradigms and new practices. In fact, he put more emphasis on building that which we want to see than he did on resisting that which we don't want to see. I believe that we are standing at the threshold of something tremendously important at least in Washtenaw County, on the threshold of something tremendously important. We are trying to create a new kind of way of thinking about justice, the notion of restorative justice. We're trying to resist the old ideas that are hierarchical, that are punitive, that do create distance between people that shatter and destroy communities. Trying to resist that, but at the same time, trying to create new practices. This evening is tremendously important. I want to read a quote here from uh, Michelle Alexander. She's the author of The New Jim Crow. It says here, during the past 40 years, millions of people have been locked in cages and stripped of basic civil and human rights. The very rights supposedly won in the civil rights movement a blatantly biased and unspeakably cruel war on drugs combined with a get tough movement has resulted in millions being treated as disposable and an entire generation lost in many urban communities. Unfortunately, many of us, including people of faith, have remained quiet for too long. Much of the silence is rooted in ignorance about the true nature of mass incarceration, but some of that silence can be traced to a lack of courage, a lack of moral courage, as well as a lack of clarity regarding what our moral and spiritual commitments require of us. The work of creating restorative justice is important. We are lucky to have people in this county who are working on making real those ideas. And we're lucky to have tonight two presenters who can help clear up some of those misconceptions that Michelle Alexander refers to, some of that lack of information, that lack of knowledge, but who also are dynamic individuals who can help to spur us maybe a little bit beyond, beyond some of the curves that we don't display. I've often talked about how the work of building peace, of creating a better society, cannot be waged by pacifists. Let me repeat that. The work of creating peace cannot be waged by pacifists. Peace is not a passive state of being. It isn't the absence of conflict. It is the creation, the active creation, of an entirely different set of moral, social values, principles, and ways of too often, I, I'm guilty of this myself, when I'm not involved in resisting violence, I think yeah, the job's done. But that's just not true. That's just not true. It requires all of our participation. 
So, we're going to hear two speakers tonight. I'll introduce them just before they come on. And we're also going to hear a little tiny snippet of um, restorative justice in action. We've got a, a theater, a small theater. Wow, well, should I call it a theater group? Readers, I'll put readers in there. A small readers theater group who's going to read an excerpt from a larger play. Uh, Mary Miller is going to come up and, uh, and, uh, and introduce the group. And she's also going to introduce the piece. Now, we have a little bit of difficulty with microphones because the house mic, we were checking it, and it's, the volume is really low. So we can try it, Mary, and see how it works. I don't know if it will. Um, I've, we've also got two microphones from a system that I brought in, and I know they're very loud. But they're so loud that they feed back into the speaker. So I'm going to have to move the speaker over here so they can perform over there. All right. Ooh. 